Assalamu alaikum in Ramadan Mubarak. Welcome to the first episode of this Shahr Ramadan series. In this series, we will be discussing some beautiful personality traits that are taught by the holy month of Ramadan that are also very important qualities of the soldiers of Imam Zaman alayhi salam. So let us take full benefit of this beautiful month and embark on a journey together to establish these noble personality traits within ourselves this Shahr Ramadan, inshallah. In this episode, we will be discussing why it is important to have a timetable and routine. We will be discussing the importance of having a well-organized and well-structured life in order to succeed in this world and in the hereafter, inshallah. Let's start off with some ahadith about it. Rasulullah has said, avoid wasting your life in things that are not going to last because your age is something that cannot be retrieved. Imam Ali السلام, has said, may Allah have mercy on the person who knows that his every breath is taking him closer and closer to death. So he lessens his desires and hurries towards good deeds. Likewise, about having a timetable, Imam Ali السلام, has said, that the believers should divide their time into three parts. One part for worshipping Allah, a second part for earning a halal income, and a third part for halal enjoyments. Similarly, we have a hadith from Imam al-Sadiq who says, Among the teachings of the progeny of Nabi Dawood is that it is better that a wise person dedicates a part of his time to worship Allah and spend the other part of his time in halal enjoyment. For this second part helps him enjoy both worship and other activities. So those were a few hadith. Now let's move on to some practical benefits of having a more structured lifestyle. Firstly, a timetable allows you to understand your priorities and prioritize that which is important. Secondly, it lets you visualize every hour of the day so that you can derive productivity from maximum hours of the day. Thirdly, it allows you to save time. With a timetable, you get to perform every task on time without procrastinating, which ends up saving you a lot of time in the end. And wasting time is something you really don't want to do because, you know, we have this hadith from Rasulullah that says, wasting time brings regret. And we are also taught that on the Day of Judgment we will be asked about how we spent our time. The fourth benefit of having a well-organized timetable and routine is that it relieves different anxieties and stresses that a person faces. And that is because with a timetable, you do not have any time for idle thinking, for letting your mind wander. Your mind is constantly engaged in one task or the other and you remain productive. And in addition, you keep on getting these positive reinforcements on completing tasks, which in turn keeps you away from negative feelings altogether. And the fifth benefit of having a well-structured timetable and routine is that it allows you to have dedicated time for your mustahibat that you could not find time for before. So if you dedicate just an hour from the day to performing some mustahibat, like ziyarat and du'as, you will design your timetable around that hour and therefore you will get to perform those mustahibat every single day at that hour. In this way, your timetable might actually better and strengthen your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's come towards the method of constructing an efficient timetable as taught to us by the scholars. The first step that you want to do is to set the smallest unit of time. Obviously in the beginning you want to start out small so as to not overwhelm yourself, so start off with an hour as your smallest unit. So basically you would designate hours to tasks and you want to be specific about these. The more vague you are, the more opportunity you're giving yourself to waste time deciding upon what to do. So for example, designate an hour to say reading the Quran or reciting 50 verses of the Qur'an, or say, um, reciting a few du'as or ziyarat, right? As opposed to designating that hour for, say, strengthening your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get what I mean? Be specific about it so that you have less time to waste and you can get to that task right away. Later on, as this timetable becomes part and parcel of your life, you can then 
increase productivity and create a more efficient timetable by making your unit time smaller. So bringing it down from an hour to say 30 minutes or 15 minutes. You can do this for accomplishing a large number of small tasks that have been sitting on your plate and bothering you. Or you could divide up a complex task into subtasks and then designate time slots for them in order to increase your productivity. The second step that you want to do is prioritize your work. So sit down and make a list of all your work and then classify them according to your level of priority and then designate time to priorities. Your priorities could be finishing an assignment or a project, or it could be cleaning the house, or it could be creating art or taking time for yourself to take care of yourself. Whatever your priorities are, just remember to neither overestimate your ability to complete a large task in a short amount of time, nor overwhelm yourself by putting so much on your plate that you end up abandoning it altogether. Remember, the timetables are not there to add stress to your life. Rather, they are there to organize your life and make it more easier and stress-free and more productive. The third step that you want to do in order to construct an efficient timetable is to plan out your week in advance. So this means taking advantage of the whole week so that you do not get overwhelmed. So basically, yeah, instead of dividing up a heap of tasks for a single day, divide them up to be accomplished over a week. Keep your days simple. So what I like to do is to divide my time around the wajib bath and designate some time for a few mustahi baths that would take me an hour at max. So morning routine and organization in the morning at Fajr or if I'm sleeping after Fajr, then obviously at the time that I wake up, eight or nine, whatever that may be, I usually spend some time reciting some mustahib du'as and ziyarat at Fajr. So basically from Fajr till Zuhr, or from when I wake up till Zuhr, I'll spend some time doing a couple of minor tasks. And then after Zuhr and Asr, I will designate time for some major tasks. Major tasks are tasks that are going to take me longer than an hour. So that could be cooking, working on assignment, um, filming a video, whatever the major task of that day may be. And I like to have a maximum of one or two, at max, major tasks for a day. And in this way, I plan out a week. So if I'm going out on a day, the major task of that day would be going out. Step number four is sticking to your timetable. That means saying no to last minute plans that are going to mess up your timetable. Make plans at the beginning of the week when you plan out your week or a couple days in advance if you feel like you don't have any major tasks on your plate or if you feel like you can move a few things around in order to make time for that outing. So going out with friends would be the major task of that day. Similarly, say no to long phone calls that are going to clash with your time. Do not in any case procrastinate. Procrastination is the enemy of productivity and discipline because it takes one towards idle thinking and wastage of time. So do not leave yourself with time for sitting idle. That would be the worst thing that you could do for yourself. And in the next episode, inshallah, I will talk about a few ways that you can get out of the habit of procrastination and become more disciplined, inshallah. Now, not having time for sitting idle does not mean that you do not take time for yourself. Do take time for yourself, but spend that time wisely by nurturing yourself and taking care of yourself um, by being productive. Now this means being productive in tasks that you enjoy and you feel well rested after. That could be reading, um, that could be painting, creating art or even taking a nap. But sitting idle is not rest. Step number five, and this is a very important one, is to divide your time but not your energy. So do not spend all of your energy in the morning. What some people do is that they keep the most difficult and draining tasks of the day in the morning so that they can get to them when they are fresh. But this is very counterproductive because what this does, this keeps you energized for the first few hours of the morning but then you're too drained to carry on during the day. So instead what you should do is designate the morning for the lightest and easiest task or for the smallest task. In which case, continued positive reinforcements keeps you energized as well. And then keep the more energy and time consuming tasks for later in the day after you've had your afternoon tea. And the last step is to maintain a healthy sleep cycle. 
it is extremely important that you are well rested so that you have the energy and the strength to take the day on and you know conquer it inshallah so best of luck to you all in constructing your timetables this Shahr Ramadan, inshallah. Remember, a healthy timetable is one that has a good balance of work and pleasure activities. It gives you time for rest, but it does not give you any time for idle sitting. Jazakallah khair for watching this episode. Do tune in for the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.